now that you know what straight and level flight looks like in this lesson we're going to learn how to turn after all let's face it unless the place you're going is right in front of you sooner or later you'll have to turn i hope you did your homework before starting this flight once again we're in the cesta 172 sp in this beautiful puget sound region of western washington i've got the airplane so you just relax a bit let's begin by looking at the top of the attitude indicator do you see the orange pointer pointing directly above the thick white line at the top of the indicator? This means our wings are level, which agrees with the position of the miniature airplane. The arrow on top points to the bank angle. The bank angle is the angle our wings make relative to the horizon. The three short lines on either side of the fat one represent the bank in increments of 10 degrees. In other words, 10, 20, and 30 degrees of bank. The two short lines way past the 30 degree mark and the horizon are the 60 and 90 degree bank lines. You won't bank that far though. Now check the heading indicator. That's the one right below the attitude indicator with all the numbers on it. It looks like a roulette wheel with an airplane in the middle. See how it shows W at the top of the dial? That means we're on a heading of west or 270 degrees. We call it 270 because we get paid by the syllable and that's the way it's set in aviation. Each big mark on the heading indicator represents 10 degrees of turn, and each small mark represents 5 degrees. North is 0, and it's also called 360. East is 0, 9 or 0. We put the leading 0 on to prevent confusion, and south is 180. Watch me make a turn to 090 degrees. That's the E on the heading indicator. And we should check for traffic before we turn. No, I don't mean automobile traffic either. There are no cars up here. I'm speaking specifically of airplane traffic. We don't want to run into another simulator up here on this lesson. As the airplane banks, the wings of the airplane bank with it, and the arrow at the top points to our bank angle. We normally use 20 degrees of bank to turn. There are a lot of good reasons for this, but the most important one right now is because I say so. Some of the wings lift is being used to turn the airplane, so I'll have to pull back slightly on the joystick to compensate. How much should I pull back? Just enough so that the needles in the altimeter and the VSI don't move. Of course, the higher the bank angle we use, the more we'll have to pull back. As we approach our desired heading, we start to roll the wings level and release the back pressure we've been holding. We have to start a roll out before we get to the heading or else we'll shoot past it and have to turn back and all the birds will laugh at us. The higher the bank angle, the sooner we have to start our roll up. With a 20 degree bank, we need to start about 20 degrees before our heading. If we try and roll out at the last minute, we could roll out too fast, and some of our passengers may bump their heads against the window, and that always makes them cranky. In your car, if you make small, smooth changes to the steering wheel, you'll get smooth turns and happy passengers. If you make sudden, abrupt changes, you'll get squealing tires and higher insurance rates. In an airplane, if you make large, abrupt changes with the controls, you'll get unhappy passengers and possibly a bent airplane. Now, if you really feel the need to yank and bank, then get Microsoft Combat Flight Simulator. As long as I'm here with you, however, let's just keep the small, gentle inputs. Now, I want you to make a turn to the left. I'm going to handle the altitude and throttle. That way, you can concentrate on the ailerons. Take the joystick and move it slowly to the left. When the bank angle reaches 20 degrees, let the stick return to center or, if necessary, deflect it as necessary to maintain this bank angle. Gently make tiny changes left and right to hold the bank at 20 degrees. While we are banked, take a second or two to peek outside. It's real pretty in this part of the country. Remember to always keep your primary attention on the attitude indicator. Notice how the horizon line makes the same angle with the panel as the horizon line makes with the miniature airplane in the attitude indicator. One of the primary reasons we have an attitude indicator is so that we know how we are banked and pitched if we accidentally wander into a cloud and we can't see outside. Let's roll back into straight and level flight. I want you to turn right and use a 10 degree bank angle.
Notice how the heading changes. The bank angle determines the rate of turn. A small bank angle gives us a small turn rate. A large bank angle gives us a larger turn rate. Let's roll back into straight and level flight. Good job. I've got the airplane. I'm going to make a turn to the right. While we're turning, look at the turn coordinator. That's the instrument in the lower left-hand corner of the six primary instruments. It has a little white airplane on it and a tube with a black ball in the center. The little airplane shows the rate of your turn and the black ball tells you the quality of the turn. When I say quality, I mean whether the turn is coordinated between the aileron and the rudder. Because the rudder is a difficult thing to master, I'll take care of it for you. But just for fun, look at the black ball. As long as the black ball is centered between the two black lines, we're making a coordinated turn. Some people call this black ball and its track the inclinometer, and I'm inclined to do the same. When the ball is deflected right or left of center, we should use the controls to maneuver it back to the center position. There's one more thing about the heading indicator I think you should know about. You may have noticed an orange pointer moving around it. This is called a heading bug, despite the fact that it doesn't have any legs. Professional pilots often set the heading bug to the heading they want to fly before they start a turn. That way, they don't forget where they're supposed to be going in case a real bug enters the cockpit and distracts them while they're swatting it. Of course, there are other distractions too, like talking on the radio, maintaining altitude, and adjusting our cool sunglasses. I want you to try moving the heading bug indicator to a specific heading. Start by pointing your mouse at the knob on the lower right-hand side of the heading indicator. The mouse pointer changes to a hand with a minus or plus sign inside as you pass it from the left side of the knob to the right. Clicking the right side of the knob moves the heading bug clockwise and the selected heading increases. Clicking the left side of the knob moves the heading bug counterclockwise and the selected heading decreases. As you do this, you'll probably notice that the airplane banks toward the bug. Yep, you've discovered my secret. The heading bug is how you tell the autopilot which heading to fly. That's another good reason to use it often. So you now know how to turn the airplane. Combine that with the other lessons in the student pilot lessons and you're well on your way to piloting an airplane anywhere you want to go.